Hi, this is Frank Simon with the rest of the news, and our special guest today is Ed Holloway, who is a retired state representative for how many years? 17 years. 17 years. That's a long time. <laughs> we want to talk today. Can I hold this up? Sure. Muslim Persecution of Christians. This book was written by Robert Spencer, I guess was published by David Horowitz in the Freedom Center. Freedom Center. It's a 2018 edition. and it's 2018. 2018. It illustrates dozens of different times of where the persecution is taking place all over, all over the world, particularly in the United States and in Europe. The problem is that the international community is largely committed to ignoring the Muslim persecution and the, of the Christians and allowing it to go on in silence. It's not politically correct, and we don't want to be charged with Islamophobia, all of those things. So what has happened, it is kept in, under the lid, and nobody knows the extent of the balance. And a lot of the things are reported as terrorism or some other aspect of it not related to Muslims, but just vandalism and other things instead of terrorism. And there's another book that's been produced called Raising a Jihad Generation, and that's Understanding the Muslim Brotherhood Movement in America. And it's a handbook for law enforcement, intelligence, and military professionals. And John Cardano, who is a graduate of the Naval Academy and a lot of other things in the FBI and other security and, and counterterrorism group, and he and two others had a seminar. And at the seminar were agency representatives from the the FBI, the CIA, the NSA, the DIA, the DSH, and others, as well as numerous law enforcement officers and members of the Joint Terrorism Task Force across Muslim. So they went on for three days. And at one point on the third day, a gentleman stood up in front of the group of over 100 people, and he said, John, I've been in the FBI for over 14 years. I'm a supervisor at FBI headquarters in the counterterrorism division, and I have never heard any of the information you have put out here today. He went on to explain how angry he was and used some very colorful language, but it was infuriating really? that they didn't know what all this was going on. And John looked around the audience and he said, raise your hand if you knew any of the information before you came here today. And there was zero. None of this information is being disseminated. Now, when was that that he's talking about? So this was in 2011. So there have been some changes, but there have been other things that have happened. For example, the FBI had a section in their handbook for members, agents, and in it was a thing about Muslims and other things. And the Obama administration had that withdrawn. And the number one organization that came as a visitor to the White House more than anything else was the Muslim Brotherhood. And the mother Muslim when Obama was when Obama was in the White House. So all of these things have been going on behind the scenes, and it's it reached the point where nobody is aware of what the level of this is. We got over three and a half million Muslims in this country that keep coming in and more and more every day, and we reached a point where things are happening that we get certain areas of the country where you've got a no-go zone, where they're operating under Sharia law. All of these things are slowly growing, but there are no people in the media or others that are talking about it. And this is where we have a problem with the Christian community, because ministers and others are not aware and are not talking about it. And I've been checking with others and reading sections of the Koran to quote the was a fight against Christians. The fight that who believes in Allah, nor the last day, never hold that forbidden which hath forbidden out by Allah and his messengers, nor acknowledge the religion of truth, and even if they are the people of the book, which they refer to Christians, and in the Koran, in terms of Jews, Christians, and other groups, they will pay a, a jaza, which is some uh, that's a tax that they make. You've got three choices on, under Muslim law. You could either subject yourself to this tax and other things, or convert to Islam, or third, you will be beheaded. I give you three options, and this has been growing, and it's, it's happening in Europe, and people are fleeing. In, in Sweden, for example, one of the most peaceful countries in the world, and they've had all these immigrants have come in, 
and the people are scared to death. And even members of the Christian community are scared to death. They're actually leaving Sweden to go in places like Switzerland and some of others to avoid the persecution of the Muslims. And none of this, again, is being reported. I read in this little booklet that the Quran demands that the Muslims murder Christians or, like you say, subjugate them to persecution or cut their head off or have them convert to Islam. Right. This has been happening frequently now in Europe. There were certain communities where they've been there for thousands of years where they've literally gone in and killed all the people, destroyed the churches. Any emblem of Christianity has been destroyed. These are areas that had submitted to the Islam and paid the taxes and all that, but they still reached in and destroyed them. And it's going on all over. And you can talk to various ministers and others who have been in Christian areas. And give an example, 85% of the population in Jerusalem or in Bethlehem, for example, 85% were Christians. Now it's less than 12% and declining all the time. All the time. And people are scared to death, and it's not being reported. And in other areas where churches all over the United States and others have been vandalized, uh, ministers and priests, priests was had his throat cut. All of these things are happening, but we're not aware of it, and we have to be. Right. It seems like they're burning the churches, they're raping the little girls, Beating up everybody. If you're a Muslim, you have to be accompanied, if you're a woman, by a male member of the Muslim community. And when they see non-Muslim women with no escorts or anything else, they're free game. And they're happy yeah. all over the United States, all over, and particularly in Britain. They've had a rush, a large number of those have happened. And there are now 10 areas in Great Britain which are no-go zones. That's really? Law enforcement, others are afraid to go in. It's terrible. Like I say, it's all written in the Quran that the Muslims should murder all the Christians yeah. they can get a hold of. And this has happened going all the way back to their conquest of all of North Africa, certain parts of Southern Europe, and all the way, including Spain, for over 700 years, they controlled everything. We use other names for the Muslims the and more. And, yeah. and all of this, but the Muslims almost got into France and were fortunate that somewhere in the Pyrenees there was a, enough of a French resistance that they stopped it there. But they were moving all the way up into Hungary and others, and it wasn't until Pope Urban II who organized the first crusade. There had never been an Arab country that was invaded by anybody. And then here they were coming in and taking over every Christian area. And it was that movement, the Christian movement of crusades that turned the thing around. We were looking at Sunday school lesson and it was talking about the seven churches of the book of Revelation. I was looking into that and apparently all of those seven churches in the book of Revelation have been totally murdered or wiped out. If Ephesus and all of these cities that you see in the Bible, they have been totally murdered and wiped out by the Muslims. Exactly. And one of the things that's frightening about it is that everything about our principles and everything we believe in, our liberal and democratic principles are worth nothing in terms of the Muslims' concern. And the the reality in the Middle East, because you're welcoming in your countries, even growing numbers of these Muslims, that you've got a situation. For example, all men are created equal under the yes. names of the God. Yes. But under Muslim law, no, they are not created equal. Christians, Jews, and other infidels and others. I was reading in here that a number of Western European nations, they're bringing in more and more and more Muslim terrorists. Exactly. And bringing them in all the time. The Christians are being wiped out because the Muslims are coming in and murdering Give whenever me. they can. A good example of one in Europe was in one in Belgium when a man came home and said that he had been to the mosque and the Iman had told them that they had to murder the Christians in their area. His next-door neighbor, 
grew their children had grown up together. They knew each other. They had been friends and all that. And he told his wife that he has to go next door and murder couple and their children. Yeah. Because it was ordered by the Iman as part of the Quran and necessary that he would have to do it. And in spite of that, these Western countries are bringing in more and more and more terrorists. Well, this is the thing, because we don't know who they are or what they are, who they were screening, and they're bringing in their children with them. And the children are being trained and indoctrinated and all that. So we're building what they call the raising of a jihad generation with, right, already, right. with the people that were already here. And some of those that have been born here who are part of a group whose parents and others are part of the terrorist movement and training their children to, to follow in their instead. And it's, just, it's, a, it's an insidious thing, and it's contrary to every principle and everything we believe in as free men. This is what makes it extremely hard to recognize the reality of what was going on that anybody would do something like that. And yet there are more and more of these Muslim terrorists being brought in. In I, Europe, yeah. they're trying to do the same thing here in America. Exactly. We brought in 3,000 from Somalia in one group, and they were all part of that group. And, and those are the things, but we don't know who they are, which ones. There may be some, some of them were not threatening and all that. but underneath that you don't know who they are that are the terrorists right there are others and they're involved in a multiple of things including drugs drugs is a weakening thing of the american public for example and they use the drugs the drugs are coming out of the middle east they're coming in through venezuela and other places and in through mexico and into the united states to our southern borders and all of these things are interrelated to the overall objective of the muslim and the worldwide caliphate there was a trial a few years back where they found from the muslim brotherhood papers saying that they were going to take over America, completely destroy America. It was an accidental type of thing that yeah. happened because they were Muslim couple were in a, they were taking photographs of bridges and all that. It was yeah. very suspicious and they were arrested and arrested. They got their address in Virginia and when they did, they got a, a search warrant and when they went there, they found all of these documents produced by the Muslim Brotherhood that you're referring to. And they're in there, it's, it's laid it out chapter and verse, every step is along the way. And they're extremely patient. They know it may not happen in their generation. And this is another thing that they're persistent, they're conscientious about how they go at it. They have very methodically moved from one thing to the other. And there has not been a, a backward movement since. There's nothing that stopped them. It's all written in this booklet, Muslim Persecution of Christians, 2018. Yeah. It's 895-5025. If our listeners would call that number right now, we'll send you one of these booklets free. And it goes into everything that we've talked exactly. about and everything is documented. It's a must for Americans to realize that we've got people in America who want to bring in more and more terrorists until they take over the United States. One of the things that makes it harder to understand and condemn because we've got the same thing going on with the progressives that overlap this kind of philosophy. Progressives want to destroy the principles of our founding fathers and the yes. Constitution and everything yes. else so they can build a new world order. And then Muslims are using that as a part of their cover and using those people and the media and the movies and the other things that are going on. They orchestrate this thing about Islamophobia, if you want to do that. And when you say a, a Muslim did something, well, that was not a, that wasn't a Muslim. It was just a vandalism or something else. The, the thing that's going on, and, and I've watched the destruction all through Europe and the Middle East of anything related to the Christian movement. Anything that was, was religious symbols were all being destroyed. And it's right. gone on, and it's increased, and they're moving it into other areas, including Europe and the United States. And it's all documented in this little book by Robert Spencer and published by the Freedom Center of David Horowitz. And if you call that number right now, 895-5025, we'll send you a free copy. They're not free if you want to get it yourself, but because it's so important, 
we'll pay for it and send it to you for free. Well, you have to understand and know the depth of this and understand because, it's, again, it's, it's, it's opposite of everything that we as Christians believe in. That one, like one man, one vote. Yeah. Be the, the, the process of elections and all that. Yeah. And they don't have that. In fact, right now, just going on in the last week in Libya, they were having a conference and a meeting to determine the, the ground rules for an open democratic election for leadership at a meeting in Tripoli. Yeah. The terrorists went in there, set off two bombs and the other firing gun, and killed all 14 of the people that were involved in that and several others. They do not want anything that kind of deals with democracy in any shape or form. Unbelievable. Of course, all of this terrorism and raping and all these things that are going on in Europe every day are being covered up, but there are magazine articles that expose it, but they're not readily available. So if you, here again, call 895-5025, we will send you material to document completely all of this that's going on in Europe, and they're trying to do it here in the United States. And let me give you an example of something that we've talked about all this terrorism aspect, but there's another thing that put the common sense to this so when you look at it. And a German legislator recently sounded a rare note of common sense. It was in, I think, back in 2016 when he remarked that the refugees that have come to us are certainly not per se, to be marked as bad or criminal. It would be naive, if not outrageous, careless, to declare that though through such uncontrolled immigration only the peaceful and good people come. It is equally naive and careless to believe, especially the young men who have been socialized in an archaic value system in the Middle East, will be magically transformed into enlightened, socially accepted Democrats after they cross the border. And I think he pretty well sums it up that you can't expect that every, all these are wonderful people and other things. They're, they're being persecuted. All that. There were a lot of people left Syria and left other areas. Mogadishu and whatever that was going on with terrorists there. That's where the Somalis came from and others. But in that group, the Muslim terrorist philosophy and others were found this is a perfect way to infiltrate and move those people in and under the cover of these refugees. Well, and that's what we're trying to identify and being able to do that. We're prohibited from, from, from having spies in a mosque or any of the other things. Absolutely. Are, and there are certain things that we're going to have to do that are counter to everything that we believe in. Now, here is a map of the United States with all the mosques on it. And how many mosques did it say? It was and there, are, there are literally hundreds of them. They're hundreds. Being, being made. Built daily. Saudi Arabia is paying for a lot of these. Uh, this is another thing that Saudi Arabia, the, 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 the Holy Family over there, they mean the, the ruling family, the Saudis, allowed their philosophy to be dominated by the terrorist type groups right. because of the fear of their being overthrown. And the Wahhabis are the, the Muslim group behind the scenes, and they're the ones. The Wahhabis are using the Saudis' money to finance the mosques that are building in this country. Yeah, and there are a lot of Saudis that were in with the 9-11. Exactly, they were coming out of Saudi Arabia, yeah. and they were being trained and other things by the Wahhabis, and these are the kind of things that were going on behind the scenes. And the Saudi family, who are a very small minority of the makeup of Saudi Arabia, are afraid equally afraid of these people, so they pay their tax going their government completely. There's a lot of evil going on. I keep thinking it's these one world people, one world government people, like the Antichrist and all of this, that are a one world government that they control, and it seems to me the Muslims and the progressives, the communists, <laughs> they're all kind of working together to knock down America. The ironic part is that they don't recognize that if, if they are ever successful, the Muslims were going to destroy them. Well, this is the booklet that we're talking about. It's called Muslim Persecution of Christians 2018. And it's 
published by David Horowitz and the Freedom Center. They cost a little bit, a dollar or two, whatever it well, is. Well, they were originally, you can buy individual copies, single copy for three dollars. Okay. But we can get the volume of them, bring the price down. We're going to pay for these and send them out free to anyone that wants it. And the number to call is 895-5025. This is an excellent chance for church groups and others. If they get a copy of this. If That's they, exactly this, right. As a discussion item and meetings and others and becoming aware of what we're facing and what will happen if ultimately if nothing is done. And again, it's hard to fight because it, it's against every principle we believe in. You know, all men are created equal. Yeah. It's the furthest thing from what a Muslim thinks, that we're not all equal, that Jews and Christians and other infidels are lowest form of animal life. Give us a call right now, 895-5025, and we'll send you a free copy of this. You'll never see this in the newspaper because the newspapers are controlled by the left-wingers. They don't want you to know what's going on. I think they even got terrorist training camps spread all over around the United States. The media won't tell you that either. There have been reports of this and movies of them and everything. The other thing is these hundreds and hundreds of mosques, because of Obama, they won't infiltrate those to see what they're up to. But if you look, the geographical spread, they're, they're making sure that they're located in almost every state in the Union, in the East Coast, West Coast, surprising number, large number in, in Florida and other places. Well, Ed, I can see we've run out of time again. God bless you. 895-5025 to get your free book and call right now. There'll be an answering machine, possibly, but just leave their information. And with God's help, we'll get that right out to you. And tune in again next week for the rest of the news. Hi, I'm Dr. Frank Simon. I'm an allergist and family doctor, board certified in both allergy and internal medicine. I specialize in allergy, headaches, sinus, hives, cough, asthma, hypertension, and diabetes. We're located at 1404 Browns Lane near Norton Suburban Hospital. Our phone number is 895-5088. We can see you tomorrow. Hello, this is Frank Simon with the rest of the news, and our special guest today is Matt Singleton. How you doing, Matt? Hey, everybody. Good to be here. There are some really important things going on. For example, today is Friday the 20th of April, and this weekend is the last weekend to register people to vote in the May primary, which is May 22nd. In other words, they give you about a, a month for the election as the deadline to register people to vote. And I think one thing that we've learned is that your vote matters and you can make a difference. Absolutely. That's very important. And the other thing is, if you look in the Bible, it doesn't say anything that I can see about voting because Paul, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they never heard of anybody voting. The idea of it is that we need to respect government powers and authorities, and the government power and authority in the United States is what say we call again. we the people. When we start talking about the power and authority that Paul tells us to respect in our country, we the people. And so right, right. our rights is something that God has chosen us for. God's given us the ability to vote here in this nation to make a difference for here and the rest of the world. Previous generations of Christians did make a difference, and we can make the same difference too. Absolutely. It also reminds me of the parable of the talents where, I guess, the landowner gave talents to his followers. One of them said, oh, well, I'm not going to do anything with it. I'm going to bury it. Yeah. When that happens, he that was like, the wrong thing to do, right? Yeah, you had an investment that he had given these men. And it was kind of ironic. I think he had some judgment beforehand of what, what was going to happen because he gave one ten talents and another five and another one talent. And it was the guy with one talent who said, well, I better not invest my money into anything. And the uh, one who invested the most was the one who was given the most. 
that's what you have to do is you have to look at your resources and use them for the best of your ability and use them for God. God right, has given right. you a lot of abilities here in our world, in our community. What are you going to do with them? Right. And what does God expect us to do with them? He expects us to invest them or to use them or to honor God with them. They were giving David a hard time and he says, well, wait a minute, isn't there a cause? I think that's kind of where we are today. There is a cause and God has given us a lot of authority to do things and we need to push ahead and do it. So now here is the voter registration flyer that we put up when voter registration. Here is the voter registration form. Of course, you can't see it very well. That's it. You can sign up and vote, be eligible to vote in the May primary by filling this out and getting it into the county clerk's office Monday before closing. And this is really important because we are responsible. It's a privilege to vote. We need to do it. An obligation. Don't you think? Okay. Now, the primary is May. The actual election is May 22nd. So if you don't get voter registration in time for the May 22nd election, the primary election, you can just go ahead and register and be registered for the November general election. So that's the story. Matt, here's an article that comes from a publication called Human Events, and it's written by Larry Elder, and it says, Where do public school teachers send their own children? A very interesting question. This article begins with a little story, and it says, Once upon a time, a man went into a restaurant, and the waitress came up and said, What can I get you? And he says, well, I'd like some scrambled eggs and a few kind words. So she got him some scrambled egg and set it down in front of him. And he says, well, what about the kind words? And she leaned over and whispered in his ear, don't eat the eggs. <laughs> so, in other words, the waitress told him, don't eat the eggs. When the public teachers, a big portion of them, don't send their children to the public schools. And in a sense, they're saying, don't eat the eggs. A lot of the school system, you could argue, you got this good school here and that good school there, but that always kind of illustrates the problem more. The idea of it is everybody gets an equal education, right? But then why is it that you have schools that really have a bad reputation? Right. The bad right. schools. You should have it to where they're all good, but you might have some specialties or what happens a lot of times they take these students and they shuffle them. So let's say you have 20 D students. Then you argue, okay, well, the principal talks to another principal, and they say, well, we need this much and you need this much. We'll help you out. You take some of our D students so we can get some of your A students because we're trying to spruce up our academics or whatever. 